Hey everyone, so this is a video on how to be an active reader. What does that mean? Well, by active reader, I mean the opposite of a passive reader. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being a passive reader. When you read books for pleasure, your only goal is enjoyment, and that's being a passive reader, and that's fine. There's many different books and many valid ways to read them, and as many types of books as there are in the world, there's just as many different ways of reading them. But when you read a book in an English class, you're being asked to read a book in a very special way, and you're being asked to do something that's called a literary analysis. And what that means is it means you have to break down into smaller parts and examine how the parts work in a particular text. And in order to do that, you need to be an active reader. So I'm going to show you sort of what that means, and I'm going to give you some pretty basic strategies on how you can engage with the text. So first of all, let's talk about the medieval monks and what they called ruminatio. They were some of the most educated people in the world. Of course, we know the Jesuits are some of the best educators that ever walked the planet, and they came up with some of these ideas. So the monks in the Middle Ages thought that the only way to read and under, understand a text was to take your time with it. And that meant you have to read it slowly and carefully. You have to spend time thinking about the text and turning it over in your mind. And they called this process ruminatio. Um, it's where in English we get the word rumination. Um, the Latin is ruminatio. And they compared it to something very specific. Chewing the cud. So when you've got a cow it eats grass and it lays down and regurgitates the grass into its mouth and that regurgitated grass is called the cud and they chew it really slowly breaking it down further and then they swallow it again and cows have multiple stomachs so each time they regurgitate and swallow the food uh, it goes into a stomach further down and the medieval monks thought that this was a perfect analogy of being an active reader so the first time you read a text would be like when you eat the grass and then you sit and you just chew on it and you swallow it and then a little later you chew on it some more and then you swallow it and every time you do this it gets digested a little bit more it becomes more a piece of you and uh, so when the medieval monks saw cows sitting in the fields chewing their grass they thought that's exactly what it means to be an active reader so I thought that's a really good analogy so why does it matter well being an active reader doesn't merely help us get better grades in English class, although it does do that. Um, and it doesn't just make us appear more bookish and intelligent, although it does that as well. Um, but it, practicing active reading develops our attention to detail, and moreover, our ability to read and think at the same time. So let's look at some strategies for active reading. Um, typically, engaging with the book involves writing notes to yourself in the margin, or highlighting, or whatever you want to do. Um, some kind of indication that helps you to pause and digest what's happening, or return to it later. So, I'm sure all of you know somebody who's very, very bookish, and you've looked in their books, and you've seen that they write notes to themselves, or they argue with the text. Um, that's a sign of active reading. Sometimes, though, you can't write in your books, so if it's a library book or if it's a school book that if you're in college and you want to sell it back to get some of your money back, good luck with that, by the way, um, you don't want to write in it because that decreases the value, or maybe you're trying to maintain um, the book in some way, so you don't want to write in it. So what you can use is sticky notes, and I've had a lot of luck with that with students. I just give them a packet, because I don't want them writing in my books because they ruin them. So I just give them a pack of sticky notes, and then they can just stick that in the text whenever they want to, whenever they um, think that there's a spot they need to return to, and you can always pull them out later and then there's no harm done. And then the next person doesn't have to look at the notes that a previous uh, reader wrote and be confused by them. So where do you put those notes? Um, when deciding where to make an annotation, it's important to be in touch with those knee-jerk emotional or intellectual responses to the book. And this requires a certain mindfulness on your part. You have to really be in touch with your um, reactions as you read. So when you have those knee-jerk emotional or intellectual responses, that's probably a good spot to put an annotation and to come back and to chew the cud, as it were, to regurgitate and to chew on that part of the text. So if you read something that somehow strikes you in the moment as funny or confusing, anytime you have that mental huh moment, um, pay attention to that. That's really when you want to stop and maybe reread that section. Um, and that is active readership. So when you feel the text tugging at your mind in a particular spot, you have to stop. Um, and it's very easy to, if you're not paying attention to your own responses to just blow past it but you really when you feel that you have to stop reread the section and ask yourself why that passage struck you the way that it did um, another thing you can do is stop at any words that you don't understand or you've never heard before or seem like they don't fit in with what's going on in the deck excuse me in the text um, make a mark next to them look them up ask someone else what they thought about it don't be afraid to get out a dictionary a lot of people um, you can do it on your phone 
um, you can really increase your vocabulary just by when you come across a word looking it up right then and there. Um, even if the word turns out to be insignificant or it wasn't very important, the act of stopping and wondering is active engagement with the text. And so let me get on my soapbox. Ultimately what we want is to have a conversation with the text. Uh, not to let it speak to us only, but to speak back to it. And that's what English class is all about. That's why we read books. That's why we read literature. Um, that's different from the entertainment value that books can offer. Um, but what we really want to do is engage with the text. We want to have a conversation with it. Um, and we have to open up a space for that interaction to, re to occur. Um, and if we do, we, we can find that reading is very pleasurable and stimulating and very rewarding. But we have to be open to the experience. If we decide from the beginning that we're not going to get anything out of it, then we won't. And this happens with students a lot when they're reading a book that maybe wasn't of their choosing. They decide from the beginning they're not going to get anything out of it. And guess what? They don't. But if you allow um, a space, if you just are open to the possibility that the book could offer you something and then really pay attention to those knee-jerk responses you have, then that's what active engagement with text is. And that's what it means to be... Uh, readers of literature. That's what it means to be thinkers. That's what it means to be educated. Um, when we're passive readers, we aren't in touch with those quick moments. When the text speaks to us, we blow right past them, um, like that dog. Engaging with the text takes practice. You're not going to be a master of it the first time you try, or even the second or the third. Um, it takes a lot of practice, but the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. So that's it. I hope that was helpful. Uh, thumbs up if you found it so. And anyone has any ideas about videos you'd like to see, let me know. I'm happy to make them. Thanks.